So, we're back to another video, and we're going to revisit the topic of evolution. Today, we have a special treat from the Discovery Institute. Let's take a look at some bullshit, shall we? Well, there's no time. <laughs> Slow down there. <laughs> okay, so we got a new argument here. Usually, we have to tell creationists that there was so much time, millions and millions of years, but now we have someone saying that there wasn't enough time? This will be interesting. I'll bite. Uh, population genetics equations for humans or primates. Sorry, I gotta cut you off mid-sentence here. Population genetic equations for humans or primates? Are you talking about the Hardy-Weinberg? You're saying that there's an equation that applies specifically to humans or primates? What the fuck? Okay, you can claim whatever you want, but you better provide your calculations here, or some sort of evidence. The population size, the mutation rate, all the factors that are known. Are you talking about this equation? Or this equation? Which equation is it, goddammit? You're being so vague here. I mean... Sure, you're probably talking to an audience that doesn't know any better, but at least do some calculations. Say that it takes 6 million years for one mutation in a DNA binding site to arise. What a fucking bold claim you got there. Are you gonna show me any of your calculations? No? <sighs> I'm just gonna put this out there. That is a fucking outright lie. Not only do mutations occur often at DNA binding sites, they also constantly appear and disappear. And that's only talking about transcription factors. You know, when we think about evolution, we often think of two types of genes. One is the types of genes that are selected for by natural selection, and the other ones are the ones that are dying off because it provides no benefits to the organism. What many people don't know is that when genes aren't selected for, they are often simply deregulated and not just disappear. And what are some good ways to deregulate or upregulate genes? Yep, through the transcription factors. Yes, I'm aware that there are plenty of other ways to modify the expression of genes. I'm just saying that this is one common method. So, what does this have to do with the argument? You're claiming that DNA binding site mutation rates are 1 in 6 million years, and you claim this without any evidence or calculation. Sure, if this were true, it would indeed damage evolution quite a bit. However, it's not. Your claim is just a flat-out lie. To an audience that doesn't know any better, they may be stumped by your claim, but anyone who has even a slight education in genetics would call out your bullshit instantly. So let's talk about your research. I went online and got a better sense of what you're claiming, and there are two main problems. One, you are only looking at one DNA binding site of an average value of 1,000 base pairs and calculated the chance of mutation for that one DNA binding site. This completely ignores the copious amounts of DNA binding sites an organism actually has. Second, you're tracing specifically the pathway from human ancestors to humans, disregarding any possible outcome that could arise. If you actually consider these two flaws I pointed out, you will see that mutation rates do not disprove human ancestry evolution. There is more than enough time. Now that that's sorted, let's get to the rest of the video. We're different from chimps in hundreds of different ways, and, and probably um, thousands of different genes. And the differences between us and chimps are um, the kinds of things that require coordinated mutations, things that work together. So it's not enough just to get say 20,000 independent mutations that occur over 6 million years and hey presto you've got a human being. Okay this argument is a result of the previous claim she made so yeah there's nothing else for me to say here except to say that your initial premise is incorrect. And have I mentioned the green screen yet? Yeah, you guys make it so fucking obvious. Seriously, you have a PhD, and you claim to have your own biology lab. So why aren't you filming in your lab? Instead you're using a green screen? Ah. I know, I know, some people love to put certain backgrounds behind them in order to seem smart or whatnot, but come on, at least find a real place and not use a green screen. My god. No, you gotta have uh, mutations that work together. You have to have the right legs, feet, and pelvis to be able to walk upright, along with a correct spine and a neck that's long enough so you can actually get your head upright and see where you're going. It's not like they need to come all at once. There are different ways to achieve bipedalism. There's not just one way to do it. Just because one of the ways out of supposedly an infinite number of possibilities came to exist doesn't mean it's the only way to do it. We could have developed a curved spine and walked around all hunchback for all I care, and it could still be successful. Your claim here is analogous to a dice. 
You roll a die, and let's say it lands on a 2. You then go and say, oh my god, look, what are the possibilities of it landing on a 2? But in reality, it could have landed on any number and you would say the same thing. The chances of the dice landing on anything is 100%. So similarly, for humans to exist and evolve from monkeys, the possibility was basically 100%. Not to mention that all these things you named didn't even have to evolve at once or even immediately. We had slow development of body structures. The hip bone, for example, wasn't this shape for our ancestors. They had something else that worked and still were able to walk upright. And then due to evolutionary pressures, our hip bone became what it is now. It's the same for all other structures and organs responsible for bipedalism. Those are coordinated changes and uh, if they happen individually, the benefit is not there. No, you fuck, it's not like we claimed that one structure needed to support bipedalism came about at a different instance than the other ones. Look at modern monkeys as an analogy. They walk on all fours, but can sometimes change to two. This could have been what our ancestors looked like at one point. They could sometimes balance on two legs, but still weren't considered bipedal. Then there were slow changes to the hip bone, spine, feet, etc., which eventually made bipedalism possible. They slowly changed together because the ability to walk upright was extremely successful due to its ability to not only free up two limbs but also to effectively dissipate heat introduced from the hot African sun. So no, your claims are bad and you should feel bad. We've done work with bacteria that suggest that um, you can't even get a simple protein to change its function to a new function in way past the age of the universe. Nope, 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 nope. Have you heard of drug resistant bacteria? What are you claiming here? That those just don't exist? That medicine is some huge conspiracy or some shit? Oh man, you're making people like Kent Hovind look good. If it requires six or more mutations that are coordinated, you can't do it. This book that they're advertising right now, I cannot believe it has four star reviews on Amazon. <sighs> what has the world become? So, where does that leave a Darwinian story for chimps and humans? In a pretty good fucking spot, considering you didn't debunk shit. If you can't get bacteria to do it in the age of the universe or beyond, to just change one protein to a new function, then how are you going to achieve all the coordinated changes that are required to go from a chimp to a human. We just haven't got a chance. Yup, let's throw away hundreds of years of science just because this woman thinks bacteria can't change their proteins. Why didn't I see this earlier? Those thousands and thousands of scientists who have dedicated their entire lives to just studying one branch of evolution. They're all part of a huge conspiracy. They just wasted their lives. I mean, this is the evidence. This woman says so. That's all the evidence we need, right? Thank <laughs> you.